To stitch a font like this with thinner parts and thicker parts, I like to do a back stitch. Um, and so for the thinner parts, it's just a straight back stitch, but for the thicker parts, I've outlined the letter in a back stitch and then filled it in with a back stitch. So depending on how thick the shading is on your letters, you will have multiple rows of back stitches. I think for all of these parts, I just have an outline and then one more line of back stitch in, in the middle. So I'm going to start with this H here, and this curved part of the H is thin. So all we're going to do is bring our thread up through the back and just start doing a back stitch around the curve. If the curve gets really small, you will want to gradually change the length of your stitches to make them smaller so that the curve is smoother. Once you get to the point of your letter where it starts to get a bit thicker, you'll want to go down just one side of the line in your back stitch. Once you get to the part where your letter starts to get thinner again, go about one or two stitches into your thinner part just to keep that flow going from your initial back stitch. And then you're going to want to go up to where it starts to get thicker again and come out of the stitches. Make sure you come out really close to this line here. And we're going to go along this other side of the thick line. And here at the beginning, my stitches are going to be, my two stitches parallel are going to be pretty close together because you want it to gradually fade into being bigger. So now there wasn't any space in between those and now I'm going to have a little space. And now that I'm getting back to the thinner part of this letter again, I'm going to bring my stitch back up to the, the initial line. like that. And now I'm going to come back down the middle of this and fill this in with a back stitch. And you don't want each row of back stitch to be like, you don't want them all to start and stop in the same spot. Otherwise it's going to make your letter look more bumpy and unnatural. So kind of try to make your stitches stop and start in different areas. You can make them different lengths on the inside. I, help, I just found that that helps. And don't be worried, since I'm using only three strands of floss on this one, there's tiny, tiny little white spots here. It's not a big deal, just kind of use your needle and mess with it a little bit and it will, the, the threads will spread out and it will fill in the areas. And one more thing when you're doing any kind of lettering, make sure that you don't like so we came all the way down here you wouldn't want to then go back and start back up here notice I went down stitched back up stitched back down you wouldn't want to be skipping around a lot in the back especially with this dark thread it's going to show through on the back of your work with especially with this light color so make sure that you aren't um, just skipping around to different parts in the back and that like I said goes for any time you're doing any kind of work embroidery work but especially with fonts you're not going to be stitching the font exactly how you would write the font so um so i ended right here um as long as i 
have make sure that my thread is covered I can skip down to here that's a small little jump and it's going to be behind here but if not I could also just turn my work over and, and thread my needle through the back and I'll just show you how to do that right now my needles coming out my threads coming out up here but I want to start stitching down here so what we're going to do is just stitch under this work in the back and keep stitching it through going down the length of this line until I get down to where I want to be and that'll just keep anything that keeps your work neater and it'll keep big giant lines from going across the work in the back. So now that I've gotten back down to this thinner part of my work I will continue doing a single line of a back stitch. And notice the small curve I'm making my stitches very short. And that keeps the curve nice and smooth. And then I can gradually start making them bigger once I come out of the curve. And once you come to this part of the letter, um, you'll notice, so we've come up to our previous stitching, there's a couple things that you can do and you can try out different ways and just kind of see what look you prefer. You can either continue the back stitch over this line um, if you want to look like it was a continuous line that went around. And I do tend to do that when I am doing a stem stitch, I will go and I will stitch over lines. But when I'm doing this with the thicker lines on here, I find it looks kind of funny when there's another line stitched over this thick part. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just skip over that and continue my back stitch on this side of the line. So now that I've gotten here, it's kind of hard to tell where to start. So what I'm gonna do, instead of continuing along this line, I'm gonna bring my needle up and start at the top of this letter. So if we were writing it, we would go like this, and then we would go up, and you don't wanna do that because that's gonna make your stitches messy. So I'm gonna start at the top of here and go around, and it's okay to have that little thread there because it's gonna get in the back um, because it's gonna get covered by stitching up here. So go ahead and travel your thread over to that side and we'll stitch the thin part right here. And then I'm gonna take it down this left side of the thick part, come back up the right side and then back down the middle just like we did for this over here. And then we've got our first letter done and we'll continue stitching along the connecting line over to start our letter A. And then same thing when we started the second part of our H. You're not gonna wanna start right here and go up. You're gonna wanna start here at the tip. So go ahead and start there, come around, and then come back and do this thicker part and come back down in the middle and then just continue along just like we did with our letter H. Hopefully that was helpful, just giving you a little bit more detail on how to do this kind of font with the thicker and the thinner lines. It's a really popular font right now, and I really like how it looks stitched with the back stitch and the outlined back stitch. Make sure to head on over to my blog, cutesycrafts.com, for free patterns and more craft ideas.